We're at a very important stage right now in debates about the U.S. trade agenda. There are tremendous opportunities ahead with negotiations underway with both Asia and Europe, but there are also significant challenges ahead, including whether Congress will grant the administration trade promotion authority. I've sat down here at Brookings with Congressman Jim Costa of California and Congressman Eric Paulson of Minnesota to discuss their views on the U.S. trade agenda, how people in their district view trade, and their efforts over the years to boost exports and thereby create more jobs. Well, thank you, and it's great to be here with Brookings, and uh, appreciate all the good work you do, uh, Madam Ambassador, for advocating trade and advocating important <coughs> economic uh, opportunities for our country. Uh, trade in the 16th District in California is important, like it is, I believe, throughout the country. In my district, uh, it um, I think uh, cross cuts a number of different sections. We have a large, large agricultural area and uh, much of our uh, uh, cornucopia of plenty, as we like to say, is exported both to Asia and to Europe and other parts of the world. Uh, therefore, um, we uh, really believe that uh, especially the non-tariff barriers in Europe are very important toward expanding that trade. Uh, in Asia, we've uh, uh, consistently traded with both Japan and Korea and uh, other parts of, uh, of Asia. And um, let me just give you some examples. Uh, in Madera County, which is a small county, uh, two years ago, just in Germany alone, uh, this county exported $244 million of three agricultural products, pistachios, almonds, and grapes. Uh, clearly, the ability to expand those markets are, are important. Among Democratic and Republican folks, there are, are, are various perspectives on, on the issue. But two of our largest operations, uh, uh, Foster Farms, which is a large poultry plant, mm -hmm. and uh, Harris Beef have uh, large union um, uh, employees, and yet they export a lot of their products, both to China and to uh, Asia. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Better trade means more jobs uh, and improves the economy for the people of the 16th District. Mm -hmm. And so I think there is a overall a positive view toward expanding trade. Well, you know, I think, it, and, and also I want to thank Brookings for having both of us here, my colleague right. and I. And uh, I should mention this is that, uh, you know, in Minnesota, uh, I actually represent a district where folks are pretty globally aware and we're pretty connected around the world and there are lots of trade opportunities from our headquarter companies, you know, 3M and Medtronic and Cargill. So it cuts all the way from high tech to high value manufacturing uh, down to agriculture. And so there's an appreciation knowing there's 750,000 jobs in Minnesota that are connected with trade. And it really is about selling where the customers are around the world and then having the benefits of good jobs back home. And so that's why I'm an advocate for new trade opportunities. And it, as uh, my colleague mentioned, there's a lot of behind the border opportunities, not just focusing on tariffs, but regulations and standards and uh, testing certifications and uh, an appreciation to help move goods and services in a more efficient manner. Well, I think we need these new agreements because as the world has become more globally connected, again, we need to sell where the customers are. And uh, in, in Asia, for instance, these are emerging markets. This is where the opportunity is uh, for the United States with some good relationships, but also having a regional foothold and uh, competing with countries like China, for instance, and making sure that, and, and by the way, many of those countries in that region want to have the United States to have a foothold to be a counterweight to China. Uh, and we also need to work with our existing allies and friends in Europe. And many think we've already got so much economic activity with Europe, uh, we can't get much better. But the truth is, if we focus on actually these behind the border opportunities, we'll, we will make a difference in um, trade facilitation and increase more economic activity, which is tied to jobs. I think we can absolutely do better, and let me explain why. In the European trade negotiations, uh, it's estimated by a lot of economists that if we reach this agreement in the next year or so, that it would increase uh, the GMP uh, between Europe and the United States uh, one and a half percent. That's significant, uh, bottom line, more jobs, uh, more economic activity. And um, it also has, a, I think, an, another important benefit, and that is that while still today, uh, out of seven billion people on the planet, uh, we constitute about 850 million between Europe and the United States, uh, we constitute over half the world's trade. 
But that will change in, as we move on to the 21st century. And the ability to develop the gold standard as it relates to standards. Uh, we can never win a race to the bottom. Uh, but if we reach an agreement uh, on a whole host of non-tariff barriers, on phytosanitary standards, on best management practices, uh, as it relates to a host of um, industries, uh, then I think with still over half the world's trade taking place between Europe and the United States, that becomes the gold standard that other parts of the world have to reach. And while we have bilateral agreements in Asia, clearly the ability to to, as my colleague said, uh, provide a counterweight to China is very important as we continue to trade with all parts of Asia. Well, um, I'm hopeful. Uh, whether or not we can do that in a lame session, I think, is contingent upon a host of factors. Uh, clearly, um, you know, the elections take place in six weeks, and how much we're able to get done uh, before Thanksgiving and after remains to be seen. But uh, I know uh, uh, both uh, Chairman Camp and, and, and Wyden in the Senate have talked about a markup of a bill that involves uh, fast-track approval uh, process. Uh, whether or not they get the bills out of committee and to the floor is another matter. My colleague, I'm sure, has a, a sense of that. Um, uh, Chairman Camp is uh, going to be retiring at the end of uh, this year. And uh, uh, action by the, the House and the Senate uh, could well uh, move into the next Congress. But it must take place and it must be done sooner rather than later. You know, I actually agree. Uh, I'm actually very hopeful. Uh, the, you know, the fact is when this Trade Promotion Authority uh, was first released, uh, then with uh, Finance Chairman Baucus, it was bipartisanly supported. Now we have Chairman Wyden. And I know that Chairman Camp and Wyden, as uh, was just mentioned, are working on proceeding with this opportunity because our negotiators aren't negotiating with a full deck right now and we needed to get the best deal possible for the United States with our trading partners and they won't offer the best deals uh, from other countries unless they know that Congress is going to have only an up and down vote it is not going to meddle with the agreements and that's our opportunity so I, I'm very hopeful that could we could break the log jam um, in, in the lame duck session after the election I'm hopeful. Uh, well, my closing thoughts are this, is that uh, trade is very important, and we have a lot of new members uh, in the House in particular that have not voted on a trade agreement, uh, over 90, I believe. And so we kind of re-engaged uh, the House with passing uh, Panama, Colombia, South Korea not too long ago. The United States is back on the playing field, and this is an opportunity for jobs and selling where customers are around the world. And I'm, I'm actually energized and excited about that, and we need to keep educating our colleagues uh, when we have a new election and coming in as well. Uh, about the importance and value of trade? Well, uh, clearly I think you see bipartisan agreement here and that's what it's going to take to pass uh, both trade agreements and uh, obviously uh, a good, um, I think, uh, start would be the uh, promotion authority, the fast track, uh, and hopefully uh, we can have success and movement uh, in the lame duck session. And then next year set this table for uh, the sort of uh, constructive um, uh, negotiations that are clearly key uh, to making these trade agreements a reality. But at the end of the day, for all the reasons, both uh, economic uh, as it relates to our relations, both in Europe and Asia, this is the right thing to do.